decided that I need some wax before I go. I know that I'm going to be a little bit later getting up there, but after scraping the edges and buffing the bottoms of the skis, I recognize that uh, <laughs> I'm not going to make it through a day of wet snow with these bases. So, got to protect them with wax. So this is the wax that I've grown up using and I bought a big chunk of it, Hertel hot sauce. One wax, all conditions. I expect it to be kind of wet up there. I looked at the, at the mountain cams this morning and I recognized that uh, there was no snow on the trees. So, um, so I got to wax up for wet conditions because what I see is that it's been raining and snow has washed the snow or the rain has washed the snow off the trees I don't know if it's going to be raining today Mount Hood Meadows uh, mountain cam showed rain and 28 degrees I'm not sure what that means so anyway I'm going to um, lock my ski brakes down with these hangers and I've got it bent in such a shape that it can hold the brakes down I'll show you what that looks like in a second Okay, so okay, so the the brake is uh, lifted with the hanger, looped over the back binding, so you can see it stays out of the way for the waxing iron to clear the base. We're just about ready to wax. I'm going to do a little scraping first with the uh, the plastic scraper. The bases look pretty good, so I'm not too concerned about that, but. Uh, plastic scraper. It's got a little cutout on the edge for the edges once you get the wax on there. A little plug for her tail. This is just to make sure that there's no wax or oil left on the base before we apply a new coat. Looks like there's some glitter on there as well, which is something that happens in a family with girls. I already sharpened the edges with this little tool, which is helpful. This is a, a diamond file made by Swix. 10 bucks or so on Amazon. And they have specialty waxing irons, but I just use a standard steam iron with no water in it. The way I apply the wax is what I learned in a, uh, a ski tuning clinic when I was in high school. Um, before I do that though, I'm gonna make sure that I've got all the glitter off the base. Here's a, somebody's t-shirt. <laughs> anything that might damage the bases into the bases. I'm going to be a little late, as I said, getting up to the mountain today because I decided to apply a coat of wax, but it seems like I've been doing it every weekend, so I thought I'd just include it as part of this week's video. Drip it onto the bases. I find that I can get a smoother application. I skip the wax on the iron. And then rub the wax onto the base. Pause the video there. All right got wax scattered all across the bases and now I'm going to hit it with the hot iron to melt it on there. I've got the iron set on about oh just before cotton I guess. That seems to melt the wax pretty well. And 
waxing the heating the wax. This is uh, probably my favorite part because it just melts it right onto the ski. Got the wax, the iron all hot. We go front to back with smooth motions. You don't want to stop in one spot because it'll delaminate the ski. So getting the heat right and getting the the motion correct. We're going to smooth this out with the scraper and um, Scotch-Brite pad. But it should dry just past the iron. You can't really see that here, but it just follows the iron. good for the skis. It's just like lotion. They love it. Thank you. And I feel better skiing on a fresh hot wax. For sure. edges with the edge scraper. last and I probably will switch to doing it last but I've got this idea that doing it twice is better than doing it once so I do it before and after I scrape the base. on the tip and tail because I don't know I read somewhere or saw in a video somewhere that we don't need it there and we don't want the edges too sharp in the tip and tail so that we don't catch edges so then I've got the edges scraped and I want to scrape the wax just to flatten it out some folks scrape a lot of wax off I like to leave some on there. I just want it to be even. Just a nice, even application. Scrape the chunks off the tail. Because we always do it front to back. And it builds up at the tail end. This one's got some wax buildup in it. Makes it nice and gooey for the bases. And again, front to back. Just rub it down. Just rub it down, straight forward and back. Nice smooth motion. 
And what I'm seeing is that I don't really need to shave the bases again. Whatever's on there will just wear away after the first run. Not the bases, but the edges. done the base will have this kind of luster to it that is just smooth as silk and waxy exciting so that's it I'm gonna pack up the skis put everything in the car and head up to the mountain it's a little after 7 maybe 720 so I'm going to be a little late. I won't get there for the first chair, but hopefully there'll be some fresh snow. Although, like I said, it's been raining, so icy and chunky. It's Mount Hood, you know, fun though. The selfie stick that I got is this Blitzwolf thing, and it's pretty cool. Telescoping, it's got the little wired connection for the phone and the button that activates the video. Um, doesn't have a place to clip in that little um, headphone connector so I put a I'm getting a little obsessive about the ski vlog but here we go got my skis all waxed up clipped together with the with the brakes got my poles I got all this stuff on Craigslist because skis were too expensive but maybe somebody will send me some new skis at one point love the K2 skis I used to have Olin skis and Solomon bindings. Now I have K2 skis and marker bindings and works great. Roots and yolk poles. I got aluminum poles. I wanted to get the composite ones, but I got these for 20 bucks used and they're pretty straight. So I like that. Also found this contraption online, which is a, uh, it's for a bike handlebar place to mount the GoPro thing but I'm gonna try it on the ski pole and see if it'll see if it'll work. We'll see how that goes when I get up there. On the way just cruising along on I-84 just about to get to Gresham and uh, head up around the back side of the mountain. It's sunny sunny and warm here 47 degrees Okay, we made it up to Herm, Heather Canyon. I got to do Twilight Bowl once so far this year. It was beautiful. And I just did a face plant on Herm. Lost both skis. Yeah, <laughs> what a day. It's a little sunny right now and cold and beautiful. This is the first time I've been up here that it hasn't been too windy to film something. So, I mean, not that I've been up here, but the first run today. So, the wind picks up definitely on the other runs. Okay, recovery from that full yard sale wipeout. I had to hike back up the hill to get one of my skis. So, the day is well underway. Here we are at the top of. Mount Hood Express. It's a snowy, blowy day. And I'm gonna go for, I guess I'll go for the face. This selfie thing is kind of floppy, so it may or may not work out for much today, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for one and see how we do. Yeah, leverage is a problem. That's all right. I need a, either a duct tape fix or a mechanical fix, but I'll hold it with my finger for now.
Mount Hood, it goes from sunny to white out in a matter of minutes. Crazy lack of visibility right now. Went and had lunch and I'm back out on the hill. So, try again.